Hi everyone, Martin Mulder here for OnTheTracksOf007.com with 7 minutes of Bond locations. Today I will take you to that magical place that's been home to the Bond films since day one. Pinewood Studios. Pinewood Studios was established in 1935 by J. Arthur Rank, when he went into a partnership with landowner Charles Boot. Boot had purchased Heatherden Hall Estate the previous year and renamed it Pinewood after the many trees present. But also because it sounded a bit like, well, you know. Talk of the Devil, directed by Carol Reed, was the very first film to be completely made at Pinewood in 1936. After the Second World War came Pinewood's golden age, with many successful productions made here. The Norman Wisdom comedies, the Carry On films, and of course, Bond, James Bond. Pinewood Studios became the studio where almost all the Bond films would be made, uh, with a few exceptions. And in 1977, when additional stage space was required for The Spy Who Loved Me, uh, the 007 stage was built. And it has since caught fire twice, but it was rebuilt on both occasions. Apart from the use of the sound stages and the workshops, uh, the studio complex itself featured in many Bond films. Uh, so therefore, we just had to visit that place. Members of the James Bond fan club enjoyed the unique opportunity to visit conventions there in the 90s. Organized by Graham Rye and his colleagues, these events were basically what started the Bond fandom as we know it today. Signs. Familiar exactly faces to even toured people around. But I was too young at the time, uh, I, so I, I completely missed it. Um, I was ready for Pinewood uh, by the time that the events had stopped, I think. Uh, so we had to look for other options. And in 2002, we, we, by pure coincidence, we came across an ad to buy tickets for a celebration of 40 years of humor uh, in the Bond films. We obtained tickets, we flew to London, uh, and for the first time I found myself on holy ground. The funny thing is, the next day uh, we were back at the gate, uh, where we dropped the name of the then managing director, and we mentioned that we'd forgotten an umbrella the, uh, the day before. And without hesitation, the guard just let us in and we could spend quite some time uh, walking around and photographing every angle we needed. And there was a lot to photograph, because many of the early Bond films used bits and pieces of the main house, the gardens and the studio lot itself. This started in 1963 with the opening scene for From Russia With Love, in which a Bond lookalike is strangled to death by spectacular killer Red Grant in the landscape garden of the main house. The house itself featured prominently as well. Later in the film, Rosa Klepp arrives by helicopter to inspect Grant, and the garden became Spectre Island. A year later, in Goldfinger, the streets between the stages were used for the exotic chase at Auric Goldfinger's factory. When Oddjob throws his hat at a statue on the golf park, the insert of the statue losing its head was filmed on the southeast corner outside the main house. And in the final scene of the film, once again the garden of Heatherden Hall was used, and 007 finds it no time to be rescued. The following year, Bond returns in Thunderball. For one short scene, the interior of Heatherden Hall was used. When Bond snoops around at Shrublands, he is actually walking on the first floor of Heatherden Hall above the green room, or the Hitchcock room, as you can tell from the window in the back of this shop. In a similar way, a tiny scene in Live and Let Die was filmed at the main house. This was discovered by my good friend and On The Tracks contributor, Uwe Brazamle. When Dr. Kananga makes a telephone call, he is actually sitting in front of a Heatherden Hall window. It would then take 10 years for Heatherden Hall to reappear in a Bond film. Again, a very brief appearance this time as the British Embassy in Octopussy. The final time Heatherden Hall's interior was used in a Bond film was in A View to a Kill. The Pools Theatre was turned into Max Zorin's workout area and in the film Christopher Walken can be seen practicing with Roger Moore's favourite co-star Grace Jones. 
The room inside the main house used to be a pool with a Turkish bath. For the scene in A View to a Kill, they raised the floor, basically covering the old swimming area. Between 1989 and 1997, Pinewood stages were not used by Eon Productions. Petherden Hall's garden would appear twice in the years that followed. First, the garden's grotto was used in The World is Not Enough, in the scene in which security man Davidov visits Renard. For Die Another Day, a tiny insured shot was filmed in the film's pre-title sequence. It's the shot in which 007 and his two fellow agents change their clothes. So whenever you have the chance to visit the studio, you should really take it because there's so much Bond history floating around. Uh, but it must be said, Pinewood is not as accessible as it once was. And the days that they organized open days, like here in 1977, are long gone. However tight the security, all this does not mean that you cannot visit Pinewood. One of the companies doing these Bond events at Pinewood is Bond Stars. And when signing up with their newsletter at bondstars.com, you will be notified whenever a new event is organized by them. And there's a good chance you'll run into me there. So that was it for this episode. And I hope to see you next time on 7 Minutes of Bond Locations. Arrivederci. No, no. He always says ciao. Ciao. Check out on the tracks of 007.com and follow us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram.